British Sky Broadcasting Network. Infatuation, romance and passion. All words that mean one thing. It's love at first sight with your host, Mr. Bruno Brooks. Hello and welcome to Love at First Sight. As ever, you know what to expect. You expect six contestants all on their way to do their little bit and hopefully find a true romance and love on the show. So to bring them on, Helen Brumby. <laughs> You know, we're fun-loving, bubbly... I know we're clashing a bit tonight, Bruno. <laughs> Deary me. Fantastic. Fun-loving, blonde, bubbly people. Well, on the show tonight, we've got six dark-haired, raving beauties. Ooh, I'm a dark-haired yeah. fan. You're a dark-haired fan? Mm. Oh, that's me out there, isn't it? I thought you'd been after me for so long. No, I was kidding all the time, I'm afraid. But we're going to bring on the three ladies. Come on, let's give them a nice cheer. Here they are! <laughs> Dark haired beauties. I think we've got three uh, characters here. I can, I can yeah. feel it coming on. You can so, tell. Yeah, who's first? Hey guys, it doesn't matter to Emma if you're a rocky horror. Karen <laughs> likes to stretch herself to the limits. And we don't think Sam's a dummy because she's got the knack with money. Thank you, ladies. Give them a hand. Yes. <laughs> okay, keep the applause going and raise the roof because here come the three fellows. <laughs> Well, some interesting looks from the girls there, but uh, let's see who we got first with the fellas. Andrew had a smashing tan the day he bumped into his mate. Mike has real bad taste in tie design, as you can probably tell. Um, and Damien showed his friends the dizzy heights, then took a running jump. There you are. Thank you very much to the guys. Nice round of applause for them. They deserve it. Welcome to the show and enjoy yourself. OK, Emma, it doesn't matter to Emma if you're a rocky horror. Obviously, a horror story you've got for us. Well, actually, it's not. I'd... Just uh, guessing? <laughs> um, I'm quite partial to a bit of Richard O'Brien, actually, who played Riff Raff and wrote Rocky Horror, who's also in Crystal Maze. Very nice. You fancy him, do you? Oh, yes. You fancy him? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I see. OK. And uh, Karen there, Karen likes to stretch herself to the limits. I've noticed you're about six foot eight, aren't you? No, six foot. <laughs> a tall lady. Tell us more about that then. Well, I do a lot of gymnastics in one night. I was out boogieing on the dance floor and um, I just went down in the splits and brought the heel on my new shoes. <laughs> so I kept crying. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> but you changed your shoes for tonight, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. OK, well, there you are. I've got Sam now. Sam's a dummy. She's got a knack with money. Well, we don't think Sam's a dummy. She's got a knack with money. Um, I, I pretended to be a mannequin in a shop window. And we raised, me and my friends raised £900 for a charity. Well, that's good. Well, that deserves a round of applause, doesn't it? A mannequin in a shot window. How long did you sort of, how long did it take, you know, before you just had to give it up? We was about five hours. Five hours? Yeah, we kept moving positions, about six of us, and one had to lay on the floor for about half an hour and then so <laughs> pose. Like, like that, and then sort of about half an hour later it was... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people uh, that were walking past it was the faces. It was so funny just watching them because they didn't realise we were, you know, human. <laughs> but having a laugh at the same time. Yeah. Anyway, come on, give them a nice round of applause. There are the girls. Thank you. Nice to see you, Sam, Karen and Emma. Andrew had a smashing time the day he bumped into his mate. Go on, Andrew, very briefly. What was the story? Right, a friend of mine's got this old car. It's his pride and joy. And he rang me up and said, come round sometime, you know, help us fit my car out. So, OK, fair enough. He used to play practical pranks with his car. So around I go, speeding up to the front of his car, went to brake, brake too late and smacked right into the front of it. And saw so his head and his hands appear above his dashboard before he came around and reached me out by my throat. He's very dashboard. <laughs> he's very dashboard. And he's very nice. Yeah. Anyway, nice to see you, mate. Well, Mike there, Mike has a real bad taste and tie design. 
In fact, it's the first circus act we've had on the show, Mike. Welcome. <laughs> uh, what happened to you then in your tie this time? Well, it's not actually this one. Right. Um, I was ill off work with food poisoning mm. and um, felt particularly ill. Couldn't get to the toilet in time, so I opened my living room window, sick in the garden. As I pulled my head back, I realised I'd been ill over my tie. <laughs> I left it on the windowsill and I was living with a real slob at the time. And the next day, he picked the tie up and wore it to work. Oh, no. And, and it's course, not this one. No, but he knew it when all his mates were sort of keeping well away from him. Yeah, all day yeah. long, yeah. All right, well, Damien's next. Damien showed his friends the dizzy heights, then took a running jump. Come on then, Damien, tell us about that. Well, Bruno, if you can imagine this. Um, a friend of mine lived on the 11th floor of a block of France, and I lived on the ground floor. Yeah. And it was his birthday, so we thought we'd take him out for a drink and play a practical joke on him. So while we were out, a couple of others went up to his flat, brought some stuff down to my flat, and rearranged the flat so they were pretty similar. When we brought him back, we put him in the lift, pretended to go up to the 11th floor. Didn't. We opened the door on the ground floor, took him into the flat, party carried on. Uh, and then a few of us were just, like, messing around, having a little bit of an argument. One of them opened the window, pushed me out. You've never seen a guy sober up so quickly <laughs> before in your life. You always did want to be Superman, didn't you, mate? <laughs> well done. Give him a nice hand. Thank you. It's a good one. I'll try that one myself. I tell you what, Bruno, you should be able to relate to this because you've had a go at this. Have I? Yeah, you have. Oh, well, let me just read the question, then I'll tell you whether you're right or not. If you were to put together a new band, what kind of music would your band play to make an impact in the 90s? Come outside. Yes, last year. It was my big hit, number 92. Uh, would it be rhythm and blues, country and western, or some other style? So if you're putting together a band, what uh, sort of band would you put together to make an impact in the 90s? Rhythm and blues, country and western, or some other style? Come on, choose now. One of those answers, please. Here we go. Right. Emma, you've gone for country and western. Do you like country and western music? No. Oh. <laughs> That's a good start. Well, why did you say country and western then? Because I want to sort of change it a bit, you know, because I fancy myself as a bit of a Kenny Rogers. Do you? Is that his name? I couldn't imagine you with a beard. I really couldn't. <laughs> and Karen, what's the other style you go for? Rock and roll. Rock and roll? <laughs> yeah. What sort of rock and roll? Shaking Stevens or... Uh... I don't know, Elvis Presley. Oh, Elvis Presley? Yeah. Uh, have you got all his records? Most. Oh, yeah. You like him a lot? Yeah. OK, let's move on to Andrew over there. Andrew, what sort of style of music coming uh, out? I see you as an alternative. Some Italian music, I think. Italian? Yeah, some European music brought into the country. Why is that? I like it. There you go. <laughs> no, it's, like, answer, I like to, it's different. <laughs> yes. It's different. Yeah, I mean, I've never come across... The only, I mean, the only place I've ever come across is Italian music, is in Italian I've restaurants. I've got Italian friends. That sort of stuff, yeah. Are, are, do you have any Italian in you? No, Greek. You're Greek? OK. So, Greek music no good for no. you? No. Yeah, <laughs> okay, Mike, what would you go for? Um, thinking about it, a bit of love music. <laughs> well, I'm glad you thought about it, at least. <laughs> Listen, I know you didn't like throwing your money around, because you never give me money that you owe me, but I wonder if this lot do. Okay, well, what's the most extravagant thing you've ever done? Blown your whole paycheck uh, on one item, or in just a matter of minutes or something in a casino. Blown your whole paycheck on your latest love. Or something else of outrageous generosity. So what's the most extravagant thing you've ever done? Go ahead, choose one of these answers. Blown your whole paycheck on one item, blown your whole paycheck on your latest love, or some other act of uh, outrageous generosity. Give us a choice, please, very quickly, on one of those three answers. It might be that you haven't done any of those uh, three answers, but still, let, let's check. Sam, you've blown your whole paycheck on one item. What was that? My overdraft. <laughs> no. Your overdraft. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just goes. No, I just um, going for a weekend away. I just blow my whole wages on one weekend. Really? Uh, and that's probably it the reason why you got an overdraft. Yeah. I mean, money yeah. catches up with you, doesn't it? It does. Emma? It really <laughs> right. does, doesn't it? Mm. Are you uh, <laughs> sort of uh, in the red at the moment? Are you? Yes, very much so. Pardon? Very much so. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> She's not giving anything away, Bruno. Anyway. <laughs> Let's move on to Mike. Some other act of outrageous generosity when you blew all this money. When was it? Bought my friend two goldfish ones. <laughs> well, you're obviously doing as well as your jacket. Small checks, mate. <laughs> So the question, Bruno? Yeah, thanks very much. I wonder okay. if we have to play around with Bunsen burners to find true love. 
Do you believe in the notion that there is a special chemistry between certain people? Yes, and without it, there's no love. No, you can work at being in love with someone. You can work at it. Or sometimes just watch out for the explosions. So do you believe in the notion that there is a special chemistry between certain people? Yes, no, or sometimes, basically. When you're ready. Emma, I don't think I'll come to you again. Uh, Karen, <laughs> you've gone for yes. Without that, without that, there's no love, no? No, <laughs> yes. No or yes, make your mind up. Or... No. 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 In that case, you've answered wrongly. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know where I'm coming yes. going tonight. <laughs> Damien, yes, and without it, there's no love. In other words, there is such a thing as a chemistry between people. It well, happens. There has to be. And it's a natural chemistry. Well, without it, there'd never be love at first sight, would there? There would never be love at first Well, Well, there would, actually, but anyway, that's a different story. But, I mean, uh, have you ha had a particular chemistry with a girl at all? Oh, many a time. <laughs> yes, well, I won't ask you uh, to expand on that. Andrew? Sometimes, just watch out for the explosions. Yeah, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Just twig sometimes. Have you twigged tonight, do you think, from what you've seen? I don't know, we'll find out later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK, girls, got to make a choice, go for it. Here we are, one of these three fellas. Press your buttons now. Guys, let's hope the chemistry's right tonight. You can pick one of your lab technicians right now. <laughs> OK, will we get any true romance on the show? That's what we're here for, so just keep your fingers crossed and you can play the guessing game after this break. See you then. Here we go again. Welcome back to the show on Love at First Sight. And let's see who's matched up with who. And uh, we'll start with uh, Damien. Let's start with one of the fellas tonight. Damien, we'll start with you. Which of these three girls did you fancy in a big way? Just brought all the sisters along this evening, <laughs> right? So, uh, why did you go for Sam? Well, she was the only one better looking than Helen. Oh! <laughs> well, Helen will be with us very shortly. We'll see what she has to say about that. But, uh, yes, well, obviously, you're very happy with the way she looks. Anything else you like about Sam? I've got a nice smile. <laughs> you're keeping most of this to yourself, aren't you? <laughs> okay, well, Sam, did you choose Damien? Was it Mike or Andrew? Cupid will tell you. It was Mike. Coco the Clown over there. There he is. <laughs> All right, then. So why did you choose Mike? Well, I like his jazzy suit, but he better wash his tie before he takes me out. <laughs> mm. I think it's quite a nice tie, funnily enough. Uh, it's, you know, does it say a lot about your personality, Mike? I mean, it's nice, bright, brash, loud. I'm very shy, Bruno. Are you? <laughs> yes. Do you choose Sam, I wonder? Or was it Karen or Emma? Come on, we want one match at least. It was Emma. Right, so why did you choose Emma then? Well, I'm partial to a bit of country music and I think Emma would look lovely in a beard. In a beard? <laughs> Just like Kenny Rogers. You were winding up, weren't you? Of course, <laughs> Kenny Rogers did have a nice song called Lady, which is very romantic, just like you. Say yes, Emma. Yes. Emma? Emma. Right, OK. <laughs> but did you choose Mike? Here we go. Are you the lady for Mike? Let's find out. No. Andrew, don't be so surprised. <laughs> Why did you like him then? Because he looks quite foreign and I don't know, he's just lovely and cute and nice and nice. <laughs> <laughs> and nice? Yeah. I bet you're a terror on holiday, you are, aren't you? <laughs> hey. All right, well, Andrew, come on, here's your big chance now to take Emma out tonight. Will it happen? Will we get a flashing heart? Will we get a love match? Will it happen? Absolutely great. So what appealed to you about Emma then? Well, he said she likes a bit of riffraff, so I thought I'd give her something else to try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a man who's confident with himself. That's good. Now, we've got uh, Karen left. Karen is over here. And Karen, we just want to find out which fella you went for. Here we go. It was Andrew, who's got a lot on his plate tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you like Andrew? Well, I like guys with personality and looks, and I think he's got both of his qualities. 
He has, hasn't he? Yeah. Unfortunately, he's going out, as far as you're concerned, with somebody else, and uh, it's with Emma. So, if you want to come and join us on the stage, give him a big cheer, please, Andrew and Emma. In fact, you probably just realised her real name is Danny Minogue. Here she stands, and uh, uh, Sam and Karen, thank you very much, and thank you, Mike. Been a good sport. Thank you also to Damon. You will get your passion pins and another nice round of applause. Thank you very much. Okay then, we're looking very good together. Where are they going? We're sending you both to the Penang Village restaurant, so you can sample some of the finest in fresh, tasty stir fries, vegetables, and sautés. This rich and varied cuisine blends together a mouth-watering range of irresistible delicacies. Explore the flavours and delights of Penang over your Malaysian Discovery banquet for two, as you delight each other at the Penang Village. Very nice. Okay, that's where you're off to. Have a nice time. Yes. Get to know each other because that's very important when you come back on the next show. All right? The car's waiting. See you later. Give them a cheer. Yay! <laughs> now we go back to another show. And do you remember?